Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. I think I'm going to start the other room since the, we're still getting people, but it will be fine if I start now. My name is Christian Garza. Uh, I work with DataSite. Today, what I want to talk to you is about the early exploration we have been doing about data citation. Um, data citation, I guess everybody is aware, is a very important thing on our community, um, so much that the community came together a few years ago and uh, asked or well, demanded to uh, grant a first class citizenship to data in the scholarly communications. Uh, for a while now, uh, practically the two largest persistent identifier, uh, identifiers providers, that's Crossref and DataSite, have been working towards the same. And what we have been doing is to build share infrastructure that will help to leverage data citation uh, across all uh, the fields of science. We do that, uh, well, the name of that is this data infrastructure is event data. Data site and Crossref uh, are each offering different ways to get access to event data and to data citations. And we are bringing together our services uh, in order to, ha to have that. Crossref from their side are implementing or giving users uh, the ability to use event data to get citations, well, relations of their articles with data sets. And in the case of data site, we are incorporating the data and event data in our, SP, in our REST APIs. So this means that when you, whenever uh, someone uses our REST API can get data citations of their data sets. So what can you do with event data? Uh, well, publishers can obtain relationships of the publications with data sets. And repositories can obtain citations of the data sets from publishers. But uh, for what I'm going to show today, what I want to show is how to use event data to actually analyze and look at data citations in, from a broader perspective. Now, the insights that we have in event that we can obtain from event data are as good as the data that is in, in the system already. And while we are happy to share um, what event data to the, the broader community, data citation practices are not standardized or consistent at the moment. So also because information in research is dynamic, one should expect that the data that you get from the service is also similarly dynamic. This means that at uh, this stage, what you retrieve from event data might not match your expectations. And this is what likely to change in the future. But uh, we're hoping that by making the service available, everybody can look at the metadata. Uh, and that will help to have an honest conversation about data citation and everything that is there. And also will help us to actually build a better service, a more robust event data, so can do further analysis and everybody can update citations in a better way. And particularly about this last point, what I want to show you is what it will be the current state of data citation by looking at this service. Therefore, I guess one of the first questions that you would like to ask is, well, how big, how many data citations are there? Uh, I'm going to step a little bit back and not talking about data citations, but about relationships. And this is relationships between article publications and scholarly resources. And this is how that looks like uh, on, the, on your right. Am I correct? No. You're on your left. You have links from article publications to a scholarly resources. That's around 15,000 links. And on your left, you will have links to scholarly, scholarly resources. Some of them are data sets to article publications. And those are around 900,000 links. And you already can see some disparity in this data that we have there. Um, the reasons for this could be many. Uh, but something that you could say is like, those that provide data sets are really interested to link this to article publications. Or those that provide other resources other than journal articles are really interested to link their resources with article publications. That doesn't happen with the same frequency on the other side for publishers to other resources. Um, as I said before, we are at a stage in which this might not match your expectations, but that's what we are seeing in the data at the moment. 
This is not exactly all citations of data. Some of these are citations of other resources. So to look at citations of data, I have to go to the a small uh, subset of 50K, uh, 50,000 links and discard everything that is not data. That is, leave us with that, that small box in blue, that is, those are data citations of those 50K, 50,000 links. Those are data citations. This is around 15% of that data set, which means it's around a few thousand uh, data citations there are in the system at the moment. Um, one we need to be careful to analyze, to in order to analyze that and to draw conclusions from those fifteen uh, percent. What we have there is data citations that have been explicitly made by authors of article publications in the reference sections of the articles. That's what that is, and that's something that Ivetter can give you, can give you that kind of type of a citation. We can explore it there. Um, you, may, you might be saying, well, this is really small. I mean, it's just a few thousand data citations at the moment. But I think a, very, a more interesting question probably to ask at this moment is, how has that changed over time? Uh, data citation is clearly new. And the Joint Declaration of Data Citation Principles came out in 2014, so it's just been a few years. So I guess something more interesting is how, it has changed, how things have changed since then. This is a distribution of data citation over the last couple of years. And what we look there, what we, what we can see there is a, a grow in, in data citations over, the, over time. And if you look particularly after 2014, when the joint declarations came out, um, you will see an increase around the 40% with respect to the previous year, increase every year. The data is up to September of this year, so practically we are projected to, again, have an increase of another 40% on that uh, section. Uh, these are great news because it means that authors are citing, uh, citing data. Also, publishers are providing some of those citations. And with the infrastructure that we have with Crossref, it's allowing us to get those citations as well. So that is great. Um, and we can be sure that this is not just a specific publisher or a specific author doing all the work. Um, this slope chart uh, shows um, the changes in the percentages of data citations provided by different publishers between 2016 and 2018. I'm just showing the top eight uh, publishers. Otherwise, it gets incredibly messy there. But and one thing that you can see there, or what I want to show there practically, is that every year we get more citations from each of the publishers, and they're giving us more and more than the previous year, the year before. One example there you can see is uh, Spring in Nature. Uh, in 2016, of all the citations that they have provided, that year alone they provide 22%. But now this year, in 2018, which is only all, all of the September, they are provided 35% of all the citations they have done. So they are actually giving us more every year. A few things about this, I mean, again, Authors are cite citing data. We, ha we can see that, and practically publishers are sending some of that information. Once you, ca you, see, you can see at this grow of data citations, uh, of even a small, you can probably ask some other questions, for example, relationships between publishers and data centers. You can, you can look at that. Um, this, I want to represent it this way. This is uh, a parallel set between publishers and data centers. So publishers go on the top axis, all the publishers that have been providing data citations, and data centers on the, the, and the bottom axis. All of the data centers that are in repositories that are getting citations. I know it's a little bit messy, but it makes, it will make more sense when I show an example. I'm going to show, show two examples, one from Spring in Nature again, and the other one from F1000. So this is Spring in Nature, and what you see, like Spring in Nature has many journals, and their, cite their data citations go to many different data centers. Uh, it's a very spread pattern. And I have highlighting only two of those data centers, that's Dryad and ICPSR, that are one of the, the ones that get more citations from journals in Spring Image. Now, this is not the only pattern that you can see. Uh, the example of F1000 is completely different and probably has more to do how F1000 is set up. So F1000 provides many data citations to F1000, the data center, 
particularly because when you publish in a 1000, they will ask you to put your data sets here. There's also a stream that goes to Figshare, and I think that's more for historical reasons. Figshare used to be the de facto repository for F1000 back in the day, but that doesn't seem to be the case anymore. So the things that you, you can see is practically uh, these patterns. We are going to continue to analyze this data. We invite everybody that wants to use event data that, to look at it. Uh, you can actually get all this information from there, from the services, and collaborate with us to actually inf uh, analyze this further. It must be clear, however, that there are uh, limitations on the approach that we are using. Um, I'm going to mention a few of them. I mean, we rely on uh, journals to require uh, uh, authors to put the data, sets, uh, data citations, and many journals still have not studied that in their policies. If authors don't put the data citations, we cannot look at them, we cannot see them. Um, we also know that majority of data citations are in the text of the articles, and at the moment we cannot capture those ones with the approach that we are using. Uh, many data sets don't use DOIs, and this, the method that we uh, DOIs as persistent identifiers, and the method that we are using relies on that having a DOI for that. Those are some limitations. Probably the last one that I want to talk about is, of those limitations, is that more than a limitation is just a, a fact that a large, number, a large number of data citations actually don't come precisely from publishers, but from data centers. Um, and the way that that happens is in this way. Data centers, when they publish uh, their data, well, uh, provide, data providers, when they publish their data, they can put uh, relationships or citations in their metadata uh, deposits, and often, very often they put relationships to the articles that are related to these data sets. And we collect all of those ones. Um, and that 900,000 uh, links, those data citations are in that box, in that side of, uh, uh, of that side of the graphic. So many data citations will be in that box over there. So we can run the same analysis that I just did. The only problem that I have right now is that I can only show you an estimate of that because we are still processing some of that data. And to, from the estimation that we have, of those 900,000 links, around 80% will be data citations coming from uh, data centers or data repositories. This, is, this number is huge in comparison for the stuff that we get from reference. It's like it blows it completely. Um, once you have that, you can actually do a similar analysis that we did before. Um, you can see how that's, those citations have been growing. This is uh, for the data that right now we have compute, how many citations have we have from data repositories. And as you see in the y-axis, that's around 2016, 250,000 compared with the 10,000, uh, for the few thousands that we have uh, coming from reference. So it's a complete massive numbers in comparison. You can also make the same analysis of relationships between data repository, uh, data centers and publishers. So now if you take the same, same approach of the parallel sets, but now you flip this chart and put data sets at top and publishers at the bottom, we can look actually at two examples as well. I'm going to show the CCDC, the Cambridge Crystallographic, let me repeat that, Crystallographic Data Center. Uh, and you can see there are a huge provider of data citations. And one of the major publishers that they link to that will be the Royal Society of Chemistry or the American Chemical Society. Uh, this is a pattern very similar to the one we have in F1000, I would say. Another example is Pangea, the repository of environmental sciences. This one has a more spread pattern. You can see a, a very strong link with Elsevier down there as a, one of the publishers. And actually, there is a blog post uh, from Elsevier, I think in 2010, in which actually they acknowledged that Pangea was providing many of the, the citations that, that they are displaying in their systems. Um, I want to talk just a little bit about some next steps. I talk about the limitations, but there are some things that we want to do in the near future. Uh, of course, we need to incentivize authors about data citations, and one way is to display this, this in data repositories. Uh, yesterday, there was a workshop by the Make Data Count project in which they are actually working on writing guidelines and testing this, so data repositories can display these data citations and other kind of data metrics. Uh, 
changing practices of data citations is going to take a long while. And we probably will need other approaches besides these two that I show you. Um, one is text mining, for example, and we are actually already thinking of how to map that model of text mining to or event data service in cross and data site. Um, and one of the next steps is that this, there is, for all those data sets that don't have DOIs, one thing is that uh, repositories can send this uh, to the colleagues network in order to share these relationships and they find relationships between articles that, uh, data sets that don't use persistent identifiers and article publications. Uh, EBI is already doing that and working with the colleagues group into doing that. And I think that's all for my part. Yeah, there's any questions? Okay, so we have plenty. Oh, hands going up. Okay. Uh, thanks, Christian. Interesting talk. Um, most of the relations that exist in DataCite for that related identifier are actually bi-directional, aren't they? I mean, they're like supplemental to and supplemented by or something mm -hmm. like that. So there's twos and bys. It seems to me that you could take those references from scholarly objects to papers and reverse them and update the metadata for the papers to say this is something that, that you know, from a supplemented supplements to a supplemented by or something. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, could you could you could you make those all bi directional and, and there get your one thousand up to nine hundred thousand? Yeah, well, so practically, with uh, there was a similar question yesterday in the uh, event data workshop. Uh, and one of the things that we were commenting back then was that uh, we don't think it's necessary, provided that we get one of the two relationships. And right now we have that. We have that. So we have the data centers giving us one relationship. We have the, pro the publishers giving the other one. Uh, you definitely can do that. Uh, but at the moment, uh, we are not updating metadata. And we are just classifying that, OK, this is coming from a data center. That one is coming from a publisher, provided we have that. Hi. Um, so it looks as though many of your sources are somewhat discipline agnostic, but I'm wondering if there's a way to track um, what disciplines these are coming from. Are some disciplines doing this better than others already? Yeah. Uh, that's actually something that we uh, discuss in RDA. I presented uh, an early analysis with half of the data in RDA Berlin this year. Um, there's interest to do that. Uh, one of the problems we have is the classification of the data sets to say with, from which field they come. Uh, I know uh, the University of Leiden uh, in Netherlands, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. They are interested in doing that, so practically they would like at least, they have a, a, a classification of fields, which is not uh, really uh, complete, but it's enough to actually say, see this. So one of the things that we are thinking is to work with them to make this classification, see if, I mean, if it's, there is patterns in disciplines rather than just uh, the publishers and data centers. Ooh, some questions over here. Uh, thanks, Christian. Good talk. Um, so you mentioned that you, or, or if I understood you correctly, you're able to track um, certain or different types of events. So one way that you're able to track uh, events is when a newly registered identifier, um, either in data site or crossref, includes a reference to um, an input that was used in its references section in the element, right. that, that component of, of what's stored in that identifier. What other events are you guys able to monitor, and, and how are you obtaining information on those in terms of um, tracking where uh, uh, various research outputs are used downstream. Yeah, so the, this talk is particularly only about data citation, but there are many other events that are in event data. Uh, some of them is usage metrics. Uh, that was a discussion yesterday in the workshop uh, for data center for da data sets. There is also, um, in the case of publications and, and articles, there are tweets and mentions on Wikipedia and some other access. I think someone from Crossref will have more information about that. Uh, from data sets, uh, besides that, uh, we are planning to provide DOI resolution logs. So every time that one DOI gets resolved, and we, we can provide one, each event about that. Um, I think that's some of the other events. There is also uh, here 
I'm showing mostly about data sets and publications, but there are uh, a variety of scholarly resources that are not data sets uh, that are also there. And you can get events also about those ones. And I think I'm not, I'm not going to claim to know unless someone else in the room has the, I'm pretty sure the Crossref event data page has a list of all the sources yeah. which are growing on a regular basis. Hi, thank you for the presentation. Um, I have the same question. Uh, what is the smallest unit of information you can uh, cite? So, like, can it be an arbitrary part, uh, fragment in, a, in, a, in an article? Uh, can you cite the hypotheses? Do you have references that will allow that? Uh, I think the data set, well, I mean, that's a big, big question, probably not for this talk. Yeah, it, it is a, an issue, I mean, the granularity of data citations. Uh, and I think that's something that we battle in data site every day. Uh, that, I guess the recommendation sometimes is that uh, in the terms of big data sets that have fragments or small sections, we really recommend give a DOI to the collection, give a DOI to the small subset, and someone can cite either of those two. But there are many cases, I mean, this is uh, by discipline more than all generalized. So. Does anyone want to open up the whole identifier question? Tricia. <laughs> There's a oh, question behind you. So how many DOIs could be issued uh, before they start uh, colliding? I mean, what, what is this DOI space? And could that address the um, uh, creating a unique identifier for very, very small units? Uh, I don't remember what's the number, but I think it's an astronomical number for, yeah. I will have to get back to you. I yeah, really don't remember. I, there, there is an astronomical number, but um, we're not anywhere near that. Yeah. Uh, currently, we have uh, 30 million DOIs assigned to uh, scholarly resources. So we are far from there. I mean, truly really an astronomical number per namespace. Yeah. Yeah, per namespace. Yeah, that's true. Over a thousand namespaces, so you can take that astronomical number and multiply it by a thousand at least. Um, I just had another question related to, uh, I, I guess, conventions and the issuance of identifiers. So sometimes there are data sets that are essentially a small component of a larger collection. And yeah. depending on how you've structured that identifier, there's a relationship in that. Um, in looking at how you tally these or track the usage of data products, have you guys explored anything relating to um, how to count that? So if a, if a smaller component of a data set is cited, does that count just once, or is it counted there and then rolled up? Or it, I know that's a big question, but I'm just yeah, curious. No, no, no. We, we have the same uh, point yesterday, actually, in the, in the workshop. And at the, that's, that's an issue that we have. I mean, you can fragment your data in any way, and you will get more usage. And that, that's an issue that we have, yeah. Uh, I think uh, the Make Data Account project has already uh, a code of practice of how to measure some stuff, but I'm not sure. I don't think that, that to that extent that, OK, you are fragmenting your data in a way that you just want to get more usage and your counts go up. Yeah, you could trick the system, definitely. For data usage, data citation is a little bit different. Right, so if my mic is on. Yeah, so just to respond to that, I, I, uh, for the code of practice, and that's exactly um, how we measure data usage. Um, this is our first iteration on that, and we really want the community to take a look at that and say, okay, the next step is to figure these pieces out. And so there is some of that in there, um, but it can be, get more, it can get much fancier that we're not doing just yet, so. Can I ask a question, going, going back to, to Lisa's point around disciplines? Um, and I don't know whether Bianca or Yarun are in the room. They've been doing a bunch of work trying to normalize disciplinary descriptions across different bibliographic data sources, which is a problem, and it's particularly a problem in the geosciences, because there's geoscience, a social science, a physical science, a chemical science. Or, um, so that was a preamble. Um, is it perhaps, do we need to be very careful when we ask about disciplines and how well they're operating? to make sure that we're not mixing up the question of whether it's a data center that's doing a really good job that happens to be in a discipline versus the discipline itself. 
-hmm. And how do you have any sense of whether which way that's playing out? Uh, I think definitely we have to. I mean, you can go to uh, crystal crystallography and see how big they are. So. Uh, I think one of the things about event data and both Microsoft and data side are really conscious about this that there's a lot of material to be read about how we're collecting data citations and how everything is collected there. Who doesn't have DOIs? And if this were to be a field, uh, life science, and there's one only data repository that uses DOIs there, yeah, it would look massive in comparison to life sciences. But that would not be that would not reflect the reality. Any further questions? Uh, if not, can we then thank Christian and thank move you. on to the final speaker?